Good evening, everyone. Travis here for TPO's Corner. We're here with a, a special quick report from the field based on Rotation 2024. We are losing four expansion sets. So I pulled up one of my five color decks and I have set the filter for Midnight Hunt. Um, and uh, now the second video that I'm doing just now, Innistrad Crimson Vow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through real quick and show you the cards that I'm going to miss most out of Crimson Vow. And I did, I did one just recently for Midnight Hunt, and I ended up choosing like 10 cards, I think, or no, 12 cards for that. And here I'm going to stick with just 10 cards, which these are big ones, but I had, I had fewer that I think I ended up using. Honorable mention to Fierce Retribution, that was a big utility card that we're going to lose. Uh, but as much as I used it, I wouldn't say it's my favorite. Um, one of the things that you're going to notice is some of my favorite cards are probably the ones that are still rare for me in my collection. I use them sparingly, and when I did, I didn't have four copies. So my first favorite card is Faithbound Judge. I only had one copy ever the whole time. And this is partly because of this, just for the newer people. Uh, first of all, if you are brand new, like and subscribe. But uh, <laughs> please. Uh, I had a self-imposed moratorium on burning wild cards for like the first three years that I played this game. Just because, for a number of reasons. Um, one, I just wanted to show what you could do as a free-to-play player. How you could build a massive collection and still get like 85-95% of the collection without burning through all your wild cards and without spending money. Um, I don't have that um, moratorium on myself anymore with the beginning of my fourth year. Um, but I did run out of time. I had plans to eventually go back and maybe burn the wild cards, get four copies, do a deck built around Faithbound Judge. Just ran out of time uh, because life took over and I wasn't able to make as many videos as I used to. Uh, but 4-4 uh, Defender Flying Vigilance gets a uh, judgment counter on it. When it has three or four judgment counters on it, you can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Then when it dies or it goes to the graveyard in some way, you can bring it back for your disturb cost. It costs seven, but you can cast an aura curse on your opponent, on, on any player really. But you put another judgment counter on the enchantment each turn at the beginning of your upkeep. Once it has three or more judgment counters on it, the enchanted player loses the game. And uh, this, so this is an alternate win scenario. And longtime viewers know that I love the alternate win scenarios. I love the idea of, you know, I've been playing Magic since I started like back in 93. Uh, it took a multi-year break, but um, I've I've put down creatures and you know slammed the face for quite a few years. I've always enjoyed milling as an alternate win scenario, so I do a lot of milling. Um, if you give me a, a goal with an alternate win scenario, I am there just for the variety of it. And so this is uh, going to be one of my favorite cards. There was a deck that I made where you added in a proliferation kind of effect on there, and uh, so you would get the enchantment out. It would have two tokens on it. The, the opponent would think they had a whole nother turn. Or, I'm sorry, they had, one, they had one counter on it already. Um, I would hit the upkeep. They'd think they had one more turn because there were only two judgment counters on it. And then I would pray, play a proliferate spell, and uh, we would win the game all of a sudden. Big surprise win. Had a lot of wins with that deck. Um, and, and this is a card that, you know, it could easily, one copy of this could easily go in any deck that had white in it. Just, I mean, it's at, at its basic, even if you didn't want to try and do the alternate win scenario, for only three mana, you get a 4-4 four, four Flying Vigilance with a defender that actually goes away so you can have an attacker later. So it's kind of cheap to bring down. It's a nice uh, toughness four stat that might last you a little bit longer than your three or less toughness creatures. Really solid card. Uh, really kicking myself that I didn't get around to making uh, four copies and make a bigger deck with it. Uh, the other thing that, of course, is big, as I always say, for white, removal spells, board wipes, by invitation only. This is sort of a dial a yield type of card. Choose a number between 0 and 13. Each player sacrifices that many creatures. Notice again, I only used two copies. I was doing other stuff, like I would add in a copy of Vanquish the Horde from Midnight Hunt is another board wipe option. So I always like to have a variety of board wipes. I didn't feel the need to burn wild cards and get four copies of a particular board wipe. Unless... You know, unless you were doing like a sacrifice theme, in which case maybe it would make sense to build around this particular card as your board wipe. Um, but I always appreciate the variety. But um, I use this card a lot. It's one of my go-to board wipes, uh, especially for white. And I, out of all the cards that we're going to lose from Crimson Vow, yeah, I'm going to miss this card. I enjoyed this card a lot. 
I use this card a lot. Some of the other more modern board wipes, I like some of them a lot. Some of them I don't like as much. So this one, this one kind of hurts as far as, you know, we had an extra year with these cards, right? They delayed rotation, and yet somehow I still want more time with them. For blue, there's a lot of interesting cards that you could choose. You know, um, Hawkins Insight and Jacob Hawkins Inspector's always been kind of interesting to me. But I think out of all of blue, I'm still going to have to go with Holebreaker Horror after all. It took me a while to get the card. I still only ever had two. Uh, but the, it's just such an OP card. I mean, you can't counter it to begin with, and you can flash it in at the end of your opponent's turn. Disgusting. Some people would just scoop as soon as they saw it. Some people would try. Uh, there's maybe one or two matches where they manage to take it out and beat me. But usually you get this out, you're prepared with something more to cast so that you can either bring it back to your hand, own hand and save it or, you know, foil whatever the, the uh, opponent's battlefield state was by, you know, bouncing one of their tokens or something like that. When you got this down and you had some instants or sorceries to fuel it, it, you felt like you were king of the world. Like you could do no wrong. Nobody could stop you. Um, this is... Uh, I just grew, really grew to enjoy using this card. Really love that card. Yeah, we're going to miss it. I'm going to actually skip through black. If you had a particular black card that you liked that I'm missing, I mean, probably honored mention goes to Catabalt Fodder for uh, a particular... Uh, sort of alternate strategy for killing the opponent by transfer, uh, transforming it into Catabolt Captain, sacrificing like a Toughness 13 creature and making your, your opponent lose that much life. Um, interesting cards like Demonic Bargain I like. It's not that I didn't like the cards. I mean, Path of Peril was an awesome board wipe, and you know I like board wipes. But uh, if I'm just keeping it to a top 10, uh, it's very interesting that... Um, you know, as much as I thought Blood Vial Purveyor was overpowered, I only ever bothered to get one copy of it. Uh, there's some cards that I never got in the collection. You can see I never got a copy of Cemetery Desecrator. I uh, really did like the, the 13 theme that they did for the Innistrad sets. And, of course, when I finally got my Toxrail, I enjoyed it. So, But out of favorites, as much as I lean towards black a lot of times, I didn't really have a big favorite in the black cards. So if there's one that kind of fills in the gaps, if we want to make this instead of a top 10 list, make it a top 12 list, go ahead and list like one or two of your favorite cards from Crimson Vow in the comments below. Let me know what did you really like out of this entire set? What are you going to miss? What's it going to hurt to lose? Uh, but I'm going to move to red because there's there's one obvious card in red that I loved. Never did get a Chandra dressed to kill. Um, but the card that I liked was Ill-Tempered Loner. When he's dealt damage, deals that much damage to any target, and you can pump him up. I almost never had enough spare energy to pump him up. This card was insta-killed so often. When it turns to nighttime, whenever any permanent you control is dealt damage, Halpack Avenger deals that much damage to any target. Um, players, half the people that I face, did not understand how this card worked, and did not understand how to use it. Um, in the previous video, I talked about the cards I'll miss the most from uh, Ministrad, uh, or Innistrad Midnight Hunt. One of those cards was Angel Fire Ignition, right? Adds to uh, counters, gives it all this Vigilance, Indestructible, Lifelink, Haste. I would love to get an Angel Fire Ignition on Ill-Tempered Loner, throw it against the opponent. The opponent would put something to block it, even though it had Trample. And, uh, and they would do all that damage, and I would not only get to keep my card because it was indestructible... I would not only half the time, I'd still do damage to my opponent because I had trample damage, but I would get to deal all that extra damage and maybe take out an opponent's creature or just throw that extra damage at my opponent's face. And then they really weren't prepared for nighttime when it was Halpack Avenger, and I'd have three or four creatures out, and I would rush them all in or, or I would block an attack, and Halpack Avenger would just do all this damage. Uh, it was, uh, the, yeah, I love this card. I love this card. Um, this was a card that I could take into Historic and not have to worry about the traditional stuff about being overpowered and everybody playing like Power of Nine cards on me and crap like that. Um, I could build a deck around this card and the surprise value alone was sometimes enough that uh, it, it would be competitive. Uh, so very fun, very valuable, very well used card. I'm going to miss it. Probably not as much just because I know I can still craft decks around it and I can cut loose in Historic with it. So I might not miss it as much because I will go into Historic with this. I know I will. 
uh, but for the modern sets I haven't used it in a while so the fact that it's leaving now uh, makes me really sorrowful this is one of the ones that I actually had four copies of I wanted four copies as soon as possible I love having four copies of this card in my decks when I build decks with this uh, going on to green a card that I really appreciate I'll pack pipe oh before that there's another card that I only had one of where is it here cemetery prowler it's a mythic rare three four vigilance whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks exile a card from a graveyard spells you cast cost one less to cast for each card type they share with cards exiled with cemetery prowler so if it enters the battlefield and your opponent's got an instant in your in their library or their graveyard and that's all they have you're automatically going to exile that instant any instant you have becomes one cheaper um, I love cost reduction effects having it uh, stabled onto a creature card was kind of fun so almost uh, I mean give me an excuse to make a green deck and this card's probably gonna find its way in there more often than not this is another one of those cards that if I'd had more time I would probably get four copies of at this point and I would just build a deck around it around cost reduction and trying to get multiples of this card out on the field and just making sure there's nothing in their graveyard that could return and threaten me yeah definitely gonna miss that card okay then we go back to Hellpack Piper oh how many times did I use this card can't be countered that's awesome bring it down for four and then for just two the next turn you can put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield plus if it's a wolf you get to untap it so if I have two wolves in my hand I could spend the four mana from last turn I used to summon the Piper uh, bring down two different creatures that are werewolves from my battlefield and still have this untapped and then when it turns to nighttime then you look at the top six cards of your library when it transforms or if it's already nighttime and you enter the battlefield with it you get a creature card and you put it into your hand that was awesome for just you get a, a nice little board state and if you're you're running out of cards oh poof I got another creature you just gave me a way to get a spell um, there are people that would be more afraid of the daytime ability than the nighttime ability and would try and make sure that it would skip to the nighttime just so I would have a chance to draw a creature because they didn't want me to take whatever creature they saw in my hand already and just be able to bring it down onto the battlefield for only two mana and they didn't have a way to remove the, the creature at the time so there are generally people that were more afraid of the daytime aspect of this creature than the nighttime aspect and uh, I lost track of the number of seven drop creatures that I would put down on this it was really fun uh, when you had access to um, oh what's I'm blanking on the artifact now but it's uh, the mask that allows um, all creatures to be the same creature type that, that allows them to be every creature type oh I made some nice decks in historic with that and made some f really fun combos so it's hard to say I'll miss the card because uh, I use it so often in historic uh, but there are a number of uh, fun decks especially Jota decks in the current environment that I use this with uh, so very useful card definitely gonna miss this I don't know that there's anything that really replaces it in the next expansions and then finally for green maybe honorable mention to cultivated Colossus because even though I only have two I made a really good effective deck with that one recently relatively recently Averbuck Caretaker only ever had one copy this is another one that uh, if I had another month I would probably have go ahead and burn three mythic rare wild cards just just to have a deck that has four copies of this out there it's a 4-4 with hexproof for six mana at the beginning of combat on your turn put two plus one counters on another target creature you control in the nighttime hexproof itself still remains it goes from a 4-4 to a 6-6 and then other permanents you control have hexproof as well and then you put two plus one plus one counters on each creature you control completely overpowered card uh, just awesome I mean imagine bringing this down with Halpak Piper uh, on turn five instead of turn six because you you know you put down Halpak Piper on turn four or something maybe you had a you know good luck with a ramp card and were able to get Piper down earlier you could sometimes get this down on turn four and and then how do they stop you I mean if they didn't have board wipes they were just toast and uh, so always had a soft spot for this card really love it wanted to wanted to make more copies and play with it more so I'm definitely gonna miss Averbrook Caretaker uh, the, you know it as much as people complain about some people did complain about delayed rotations I still want more time still want more time with some of these cards um, Edgar Charmed Groom is the next one on my list legendary vampire noble 
four four it's like so it's like a vampire lord right other vampires you control get plus one plus one uh, but the key is when it dies it's transformed into the coffin a legendary artifact that gives you the plus the one one uh where it, hang on let me turn off the craft and get back to it for a second right clicking while you're trying to well you got the craft button on just makes it think that you want to craft it sorry there we are okay so if I rec hey still trying to do it there we go I just wanted to show you the other token there the the vampire token that you generate three of these right one per turn a one one life link each time and then once it's got three bloodline counters on it you remove those counters it goes it changes back from the coffin into Edgar charmed groom now about 50 60 percent of the time I was very suspicious because um, there was no there was no telling when I was going to start using this card I didn't use it a ton but I used it quite a bit whenever I was playing white black especially since I only had one or two copies of it at the time didn't hurt to put it in right and it just so happens that instead of using destroy cards destroy creature cards uh, my opponent would suddenly use exile spells from out of nowhere and it's like hang on um, I made like three different decks before this in the last week and there were no exile spells they were all destroy spells now all of a sudden I have Edgar in my deck and suddenly every every player has exile spells all of a sudden that I'm facing. That could not have been a coincidence. Uh, so th it's amazing how little use I got out of this card compared to the frequency with which I played it. Just because the opponent just so happened to have an exile counterspell ready just at the right time that they needed it to get rid of Edgar. Poor guy. Uh, yeah, the fix was in against him. So yeah, I'm going to miss him. Okay, next, Halana and Elena Partners. Oh, I feel like I have to include this as a favorite. If you were playing red and green, do you ever leave this out? I mean, it's a, the first card I think of when I'm playing those colors. Uh, first Strike and Reach, first of all, is not bad for a 2-3. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put X plus one plus one counters on another target creature control, where X is Halana and Elena's power. That creature gains haste until end of turn. There are a whole lot of a really good counter synergy decks that work pretty fast, uh, but most of them have been, uh, I would say, white and green. Selesnya, a little splash of red, and I think those could have been uh, even more devastating than they were, and potentially even faster if, if you didn't run into uh, mana problems. Um, but yeah, uh, I would love to, to put, just pair this up with other red-green cards. Uh, made some really devastating decks. Another card that I put in my historic decks all the time when I'm playing multicolors. Uh, yes, yeah, so there was a point where I would be making a deck, it would be red and green, and I would tell you in the deck tech, I'm leaving out Alana and Elena, even though I got red, green and red in here, because we have used it so much. Um, I'm deliberately, even though I think it's still the best card that could be in this deck, I'm leaving it out on purpose. Um, and, and this is one that I did eventually get three copies of. So uh, when I did have a chance to put it in and use it, I put in all three copies. It was a really fun card. Really enjoyed that. Uh, let's see. Where is... There's one other card. Hang on. I think I'm skipping one. Multicolored. There we are. Ancient Lumber Knot. Uh, four total. Two in one green and one black. It's a 1-4 Tree Folk. Each creature you control with toughness greater than its power assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So when it came time for battle, I would attack with this. Instead of a 1-4, it's treating as 4-4. Four four. Um, I love to put in the 1-13 uh, Skeletons and attack them attack for 13-13, that type of thing. Uh, when I had access to uh, a really nice blue whale, um, that could be, what was it, 0 0-15 or 0 0-16 creature? And uh, suddenly you're attacking with a 15-15, 16-16 well. Uh, it's a really fun type of card. Um, I Again, this is a card that I go into historic and make decks with in historic format as well. And uh, so, yeah. Um, this is one of the decks that I never got rid of. It's out of my 100 decks. I'm always full up in my library for my deck list. I've got 100 decks on there. And because I was trying to clear them out before rotation hit, then they dropped the 10 pre-mades. I've actually got 108 decks right now in my deck list. This build-around, I made, I made a deck that has this as the build-around. It's still in there. I still drag it out. I still use I still play it to this day. 
one of my favorite decks. Very effective. Again, one of those that can be a real surprising win against people. Um, so that's that's the card number 10, Ancient Lumber Knot. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and, and paste all of the text, uh, the list of cards in the text below into the YouTube uh, box so you can see the list uh, as opposed to just going through the video alone. I want to get your feedback again, especially since I didn't really pick out a favorite black card. If you got a favorite black card especially, let me know. But I am interested in your opinion on what you think out of Innistrad Crimson Vow that we're losing because of rotation. What card is it hurting you the most to say goodbye to? What was your favorite or what was your list of favorites? Um, I'll even take a top 10 if you want to give me your top 10 list. But uh, as always, we ask you to like and subscribe. We ask you to uh, leave a comment if you'd like to. That always helps the channel out. Uh, so this is Travis from T-Pose Corner saying uh, goodbye for now and we'll come out with uh, the other two sets that we're going to lose next and I'll cover those in a short quick video for you as well covering the top 10 or 12 cards that I will miss most out of those expansions that are also going away. Thanks everyone. Have a good one.